While Alexander was in Troy paying his respects to the heroes of Greece's past, the Persian commanders and governors were meeting in the small Greek town of Zelaya. Serving under them were something like 20,000 cavalry and 20,000 Greek mercenary infantry. There also were some local levies as well. Because of their numerical inferiority, particularly with respect to infantry, a man named Memnon of Rhodes, who was serving under the Persian king, opined that what they should do is avoid a confrontation with Alexander. Rather, Memnon argued, they should burn down all the crops in the area, destroy the fodder, and also gut the towns. If they did that, Alexander would be forced to leave the region through a lack of supplies. Memnon seems to have been an expert on logistics, that is, the science of how to supply and maintain an army in the field. Although he couldn't have known it, Memnon's advice was even more prescient than even he knew. The reason for that is that we know that Alexander came to Asia with a remarkably small amount of materials and supplies. In chapter 15 of his life of Alexander, Plutarch quotes a late 4th, early 3rd century BC source, Durus of Samos, who claims that the Macedonians only had 30 days worth of supplies with them when they crossed the Hellespont. Therefore, Alexander had to find and fight the Persians as soon as possible, or his supplies would run out. When they ran out, the only plausible alternative Alexander would have had would have been to go to the local Greek towns and to extort money and supplies from them. If he did that, he risked alienating the local Greeks, thereby defeating the ideology of the campaign itself. The local Persian governor of Hellespontine Phrygia, a man named Arcides, disagreed vehemently with Memnon's advice and persuaded the other Persian commanders and governors. They distrusted Memnon because he was a Greek and also because they had had some limited success against the expeditionary force in the year before. And so they decided to cross swords with Alexander and the Macedonians. By the time Alexander's scouts found the Persian army, it had moved up onto a strong defensive position on the east bank of the Granicus River. The Persian cavalry were set up some distance away from the actual bank itself. The reason for that was that they wanted to be able to charge down upon anyone who came into the river and tried to come up the banks of the river. The Greek mercenary infantry serving with the Persians were withdrawn from the cavalry some distance, perhaps a half a kilometer, maybe slightly more. Alexander and the Macedonians reached the river late in the afternoon, probably on some May day of 334 BC. Alexander's general Parmenio, observing the natural strength of the Persian position, according to Arian, whose seven-book history of Alexander's campaigns, the Anabasis, or Journey Up Country, was written during the second century AD, advised Alexander to wait, to move down the river, cross during the night, come up on the other side at dawn, and they would be in good order for an attack. And according to Diodorus Siculus, that is what happened, and that's the way the battle developed. And we'll see that there's at least some circumstantial evidence that supports a very different reconstruction of how the battle was fought. According to Arian, whose account at this point is probably based on that of a man named Callisthenes, 
whom Alexander had taken on as his official historian of the campaigns. Alexander rejected Parmenio's advice. He said that he would be ashamed of himself if he let a little trickle of a river like the Granicus stop him when they had crossed the Bosphorus. And so he immediately dispatched Parmenio over to the left-hand side of the Macedonian line and went over to the right with a companion cavalry. In the middle was the infantry phalanx. In command over on the right of the companions was Philotas, Parmenio's son. The Hupaspistai were commanded by another one of Parmenio's sons, a man named Nicanor. 